Together, we support immune function, supply fuel for immune cells, and sustain tissue health. Ensure with 25 vitamins and minerals, and ensure complete with 30 grams of protein. Rise up this morning. Sandals Winter Blues Sale. Prices starting from $249 per person per night. Visit sandals.com. Riri, where have you been? Listen, before Riri rocks halftime only, we're in Arizona for a Super Bowl sized stadium tour. So good. And speaking of halftime, someone who knows what Rihanna's going through, the queen of hip. Happening now. It was sentencing today for Andre McDonald. He got 20 years, what the judge had to say to him before he handed down that punishment. Mild outside today, but get ready. A few more cold fronts are on the horizon. We'll talk about those, what they'll do to temperatures and some more rain chances ahead. See you in a bit. And if you like taking long, hot showers, you could be sending money down the drain. Coming up, we're going to give you some water saving tips, plus just how long that shower should be. The News at 5 starts right now. 20 years in prison, that is the sentence for Andre McDonald after he was convicted on Friday of manslaughter in the death of his wife. The state had six witnesses take the stand before the judge made his decision. It was an emotional hearing from both the victim impact statements, but also from the judge himself. Eric Hernandez with his words to the man will now spend at minimum the next 10 years in prison. I hope that you will give Andre McDonald the least amount that you think possible. This man has taken absolutely zero responsibility. He's shown absolutely zero remorse for his actions. After a two-week trial, 399th District Court Judge Frank Castro handed down his sentence for Andre McDonald. McDonald on Friday was found not guilty of murder, but instead guilty of manslaughter by a jury in the 2019 death of his wife. I understand the anger, but still not a right to take a life. After reviewing everything presented in the punishment phase, Judge Castro addressed Andre McDonald. Almost seems like emotion, like a emotional, like a serial killer or something. It doesn't match up with your military career and everything else that you got here. McDonald was then sentenced the maximum punishment. I'm going to go ahead and sentence you to 20 years in the institutional division of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. Now, after, after that sentence was heard, we had victim impact statements. Andrine's father, her sister, faced off against Andre McDonald, and then a letter was read to Andre from his daughter. We'll have all of that coming up at 6. Live at the Kathina Reeves Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Erica. He was shot and killed inside a vehicle after a car meetup. The Bear County Medical Examiner now identifying the young victim. 18 year old Paul Joseph Ortiz killed last night at 1030 in a parking lot off Meadow Leaf Drive. That's close to Marbach and 410. According to police, the officers broke up that car meet, made everyone leave the scene. One of the vehicles went to Meadow Leaf Drive instead. That's when someone approached the car to talk. During that conversation, Ortiz shot in the head was taken to the hospital by the driver. The motive still not known. Ortiz pronounced dead at the hospital by staff. Crime Stoppers looking for the public's help in finding a suspect who robbed a family dollar store on the west side. It happened back on January 9th on West Commerce Street. Police say the man that you see on your screen uh, entered the store. He pulled out a gun and he threatened the store clerk for money and emptied those registers, then ran off. SAPD searched the area, but the suspect wasn't found, so anyone with information can call Crime Stoppers. The phone number 210-224-STOP. After allegedly stabbing someone, a man arrested yesterday and charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, Armando Idrogo, was arrested at Overhill in the Woodlawn Heights area after police say he stabbed a 32-year-old. Officers also said Idrogo and the victim had fights before was not uncommon for them to argue. Idrogo's bond set at $75,000. He also has a criminal history dating back to 1975, where Bear County court records show he's been arrested for burglary, theft, and drug charges. 
The former Bear County Precinct 2 Constable Michelle Barrientes Vela now asking for a new trial. This coming just weeks after she was sentenced to five years probation and 90 days in jail. The 60 page document filed by her attorneys states that the Texas Ranger Bradley Freeman's behavior in court unfairly turned the jury against Barrientes Vela. She was indicted on a list of public corruption charges in early 2020, including aggravated perjury, official oppression, and tampering with weapon records rather she only went on trial though for the tampering with records charge but Bradley Freeman did testify that she had committed official oppression as well is shot down on Saturday, but this mysterious balloon that flew over the country still the subject of a lot of speculation US officials thought it was being used as a spying tool and accused the Chinese government. They responded by saying it was an unmanned civilian balloon used to study weather and that the White House was overreacting. Aiki Jachi on how an F-22 fighter jet shot it out of the sky and how other balloons seem to be surfacing all over the world. Today, critical search and recovery efforts continue as Navy divers continue to find some remnants of that Chinese balloon the Pentagon says was on a spying mission over the U.S. The balloon was shot down off the coast of South Carolina Saturday by an F-22 fighter jet using a Sidewinder missile. Rank one, flash one. That is a key kill. Pentagon officials saying they tracked the balloon's every movement as it passed over sensitive military installations, first entering U.S. airspace over the Aleutian Islands in Alaska, then re-entering the country in Idaho and passing through Montana, South Dakota, Nebraska, Missouri, and Kansas before flying down to the Carolinas where it was shot down, the debris scattered across seven miles of shallow water. China responding to Pentagon allegations the balloon was gathering intelligence, saying it was an unmanned civilian airship and that they'd lost control of the balloon. Beijing accusing the U.S. of overreacting. The Pentagon now pointing to another balloon seen flying over Colombia and Venezuela. Experts say China and the U.S. spy on each other frequently and that there was value in waiting to shoot down the balloon. They're collecting different types of intelligence that come off its movements, how it's maybe communicating with the satellites. And now military leaders say other balloons were not spotted by NORAD during the Trump administration because of an awareness gap that needs to be figured out. That could help explain why Trump administration officials had denied being aware of spy balloon incursions when they were in office. In addition to China's response, Beijing says it reserves the right to respond further. No indication what that veiled threat actually means. Aika Jachi, ABC News, Washington. An urgent evacuation order for the small town of East Palestine, Ohio, as officials warn a train that was carrying toxic chemicals derailed and is polluting the air now. Emergency response crews are working to prevent a major explosion. They're doing a controlled release of the hazardous materials inside the five tanker cars. And if you can believe this has happened back on Friday, but it's still causing a problem today. Officials expanding the mandatory evacuation zone to now include parts of Pennsylvania. Chemicals like vinyl chloride are filling up the air. Long-term exposure can irritate your sinuses and lungs, but long-term, it can cause chronic liver and kidney problems. You need to leave. You just need to leave. We're ordering you to leave. Uh, this is a matter of life and death. Currently, there's no clear timeline on when residents are going to be able to return to their homes. The National Transportation Safety Board has gathered enough data to begin an investigation. New York Congressman George Santos having even more issues, it seems. The House Republican from New York accused of sexual harassment from a prospective staffer. Derek Miles filed a police report and a complaint with the House Ethics Committee. In the complaint, Myers said Santos touched him inappropriately during a meeting on January 25th. When he declined the invitation to visit Santos's home, his job offer was rescinded some days later. Santos denies the allegations. The congressman said the reason he withdrew Myers' job offer was an ongoing wiretap case while Myers worked as a reporter in Ohio. A devastating 7.8 earthquake killed more than 2,800 people in the countries of Turkey and Syria. Volunteers continue searching for rescuers under the rubble like a little boy that was pulled out from under the debris alive. There you see it. 
The catastrophic earthquake collapsed hundreds of buildings as people slept. The U.S. Geological Survey predicts the death toll could rise by the thousands based on the quake's point of origin. One of the strongest to hit the region since 1939. We're not ready to deal with something like this. It's bigger than us and bigger than any, any NGO operating in northwest Syria to, to handle this disaster. Aftershocks continue to complicate the search and rescue, one measuring a 7.5. Several countries providing relief efforts like money, equipment, and manpower as rescuers dig for any signs of life. Tonight's Powerball jackpot expected to be the fifth largest ever. No one matched all six numbers drawn on Saturday, so the jackpot now at $747 million. That's about $403 million if you choose the lump sum cash option. No one has won the jackpot since November 19th, but it's still not even close to the all-time record. That was back on November 7th when the pot was worth $2.4 billion with a B dollars. The Dallas police say the suspect they arrested after the theft of those tamarind monkeys from the Dallas Zoo could be linked to the tampering of other animal enclosures. After nearly a month long nightmare, zoo employees were trying to find the reason why someone would want the wild animals to escape. And how did someone secretly cut the wires to their enclosures? They found four foot high cut in the wire mesh for the Langer monkeys enclosure. Just two exhibits away, the clouded leopard named Nova escaped also because of a wire cut. Then last week, those two monkeys were taken from the zoo as well. They made a huge cut in this wall of mesh right here in order to get into the habitat. That incident led to the arrest of this guy, 24-year-old Davian Irvin. Wildlife experts say the fascination with exotic animals might be creating an underground world of exotic animals as pets. We want to take you outside for your traffic authority weather. We're watching the traffic at I-10. This is right at that important Y area. And you can see there's three cars pulled over on the left-hand side of the lanes, and they are blocking traffic, so traffic is backing up right there. Turned out to be a nice sunny and warm afternoon. 75 the high temperature in town. You look at Eagle Pass up to 80 degrees right now. Warren's backyard in Del Rio at 79. Even Floresville 78. Lakey, little bit cooler at 70 degrees. The clouds stuck around a little bit longer in parts of the hill country. Consequently, a little bit cooler. 73 Myco along with Bernie at this time. This evening, temperatures falling off, but not a whole lot. I mean, we'll be down to 68 at 8 o'clock, 62 at midnight, and then pretty much just staying there the, the rest of the night. Breezy, you'll notice that wind out of the southeast at 10 to 20. More fog and drizzle. Tomorrow morning, right around 60 degrees. But we've got a damp Tuesday to talk about. We'll get into the rain chances, the storm chances, and how much rain we could get in just a bit. Thank you, Adam. Have you ever thought about how you can save money while taking a shower? Our own Marilyn Moritz will provide tips on how you can serve how you can conserve water for a lower water bill. I'm Myra Arthur, and here's what we're working on for the news at six o'clock today. In the past six months, there have been three shootings either at or after supposed car club meetups why that has legitimate car club members concerned and how police are differentiating these groups. And police say he sped away, leaving a dying woman and her children in a wrecked car behind him. Now that woman's family wants your help to find the motorcyclist who was involved in a deadly crash late last month. Plus. It's definitely an alternative route. A lot of people come in for anxiety, pain. CBD, it is popping up everywhere it seems. More stores selling it in a lot of different ways, but what exactly is it? And what's the deal with Delta 8? We explain that and examine the gray area when it comes to current laws. That's in a new case that explains today on the News at 6. Thank you, Myra. Well, whether you shower in the morning to get energized or at night to relax, it takes water, sometimes a lot of water. Twagner Sides Marilyn Moritz has some ways to shower smarter for the planet and our water bills. Mom, I'm taking a shower. A bath may be relaxing, but at the Brown House, they're shower people. I typically 
a shower in the morning. It helps me wake up, get in, get out, and get ready for my day. I like to take quick showers. I usually shower for 10 minutes at the most. The average family uses nearly 40 gallons of water a day just showering. That accounts for nearly 17% of residential indoor water use. You can save a lot of water and energy just by limiting your shower time to about five minutes. And instead of idly waiting for the shower to heat up, go ahead and use that water and brush your teeth. Installing a water-saving shower head makes a difference too. Look for the EPA's WaterSense label. It means your shower's output is no more than two gallons a minute. It can help save 2,700 gallons of water a year and bonus reduces demand on your water heater. If you're concerned the low flow may be too wimpy. In many cases, you really may not be able to tell the difference. To qualify for the WaterSense label, a shower head has to have certain spray patterns and feel and meet criteria that's at least as good, if not better than other shower heads on the market. Hot showers might feel good, but warm water is better for most people's skin. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Going to take a live look outside, right over the old Hot Wells Resort down there. It's a beautiful spot. Yeah, they've done a great job fixing it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looks great. What a beautiful Sunday and so far a beautiful Monday, Adam. And that sunshine this weekend oh, felt yeah. good. We oh, needed it. Even Friday it felt good, even though it was still a little bit cool then. Hard to believe, you know, this time last week we were down in the 30s. Now <laughs> we've got some 80s on the map. More fog and drizzle, though, developing tonight. It's looking like a pretty dreary day tomorrow with some off and on light rain, a damp day, some much needed rain, don't get me wrong, and even some pockets of heavier showers. We're going to get into the timing of that in a moment, along with cooler temperatures later on this week. A little bit of up and down temperature wise. Here's a look at those rain chances. All important, very light in nature off and on throughout the day tomorrow. I think even some fog and drizzle starting as early as midnight tonight and then off and on or intermittent light activity throughout the day tomorrow with some heavier rain, some pockets of heavier rain developing by tomorrow night, even lasting into Wednesday morning. Here's the big picture. We had that low fog earlier today. The clouds cleared out, warmed our temperatures up, but we still have this big dip in the upper level flow, and that's going to be pr providing a good amount of the upper level lift to generate some showers and even thunderstorms. It's also going to help push a cold front through tomorrow night. So all these factors coming together, not to mention that breeze off the Gulf of Mexico right now, giving us that hint of mugginess that we had outside today. Well, that's going to be reinforced through the night. Low clouds quickly redeveloping by, I think, 10, 11 p.m. And then some fog and drizzle early. Notice how late morning, midday, noon, future cast is showing just some very light little spotty showers here and there, you know, a few hundredths of an inch at a time, maybe a tenth of an inch at a time. That'll be the case off and on throughout the afternoon. Once we get past sunset and into the evening, even by 6, 7 p.m., some heavier storms could develop and maybe even a severe storm east of I-35. But I think the main thing is will be just some pockets of heavier rain tomorrow evening and tomorrow night. Not for everybody but scattered around about half of the case at 12 viewing area. And that'll this is midnight. That'll be through tomorrow night and even lingering into very early on Wednesday morning before we start to clear out again Wednesday afternoon. As for the potential, of course, it depends on where the heaviest pockets really set up the heaviest showers develop and those downpours, particularly where there's lightning and thunder, you get the heavier rain. But as just a general rule of thumb, the potential is about three quarters of an inch around San Antonio, higher amounts east of town. We could see even over an inch as you get closer to Hallettsville, Cuero, Nixon, Smiley, Gonzalez area and lesser amounts west of I-35. And then way off in the extended forecast. Another shot at some showers. 75 degrees. That's our current reading. Dew point of 56. That's going to climb again tonight. The southeasterly wind. It's noticeable at 17 miles per hour. A bit breezy. It's going to be like that through the night. Some 80s on the map farther south of town, including Cthulhu right now. But locally, we're in the 70s. 78 stints and 75 Converse and 77 now in Castroville. Tomorrow morning, 62 degrees. That fog and drizzle, a little bit of dampness, and then some actual light showers intermittently through, throughout the day and even into the afternoon. By sunset, and especially after sunset, 
8, 9 o'clock. We'll start to see some pockets of heavier rain developing with a few of those storms. Southeasterly wind, by the way, at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tomorrow afternoon, right near 70 for the high. About 72 on the south side, west side, 72 degrees, and some upper 60s in the hill country. Notice those high temperatures. Take a dive. We're down in the 60s for highs Wednesday. Friday and Saturday, highs closer to 60 degrees. And after this rain chance, sunny Wednesday afternoon through Saturday. Nice. Thank you so much, Adam. All right, it's all about expectations. Remember <laughs> back in the days when we were thinking, oh, rodeo road trip. It's yeah. When the Spurs come together, make their playoff run. Absolutely. Now we just want them to win a couple We do just want them to win. The Spurs really need a win just to make them feel better. I mean, Manu used to say that we needed a win to make ourselves feel better. It's exactly what the Spurs need tonight as they tip off the rodeo road trip at the Chicago Bulls. The Spurs have lost eight straight. Come on, guys. Plus, Kellen Moore talks about his departure from the Dallas Cowboys. Coming up. The Spurs are now in Chicago to start their nine game rodeo road trip tonight. They tweeted pictures of the team leaving yesterday. You have Keldon Johnson being funny. Zach Collins with Nike logos on top of Nike logos and star rookie Jeremy Sohan ready for the flight, but he's going to miss his third straight game tonight with low back soreness. Trey Jones is also out again with left foot soreness and Keldon is now questionable with left ankle soreness. Following shoot around at Roosevelt University, Doug McDermott was asked about the importance of opening the road trip with a win. It's very important, you know, it's a long time we're going to be on the road, so getting off to a good start is very important. You know, we're going to be together here for a whole month straight, so, uh, you know, it's, it's important to kick it off with a good start. Here's the matchup. Bulls will host the Spurs tonight at 7. We'll have highlights on the night beat. LeBron James isn't happy with the Lakers front office after they missed out on Kyrie Irving. Brooklyn traded Irving to the Dallas Mavericks along with Markeith Morris in exchange for two players, a 2029 first round pick and two second round selections. In response, LeBron tweeted, Maybe it's me. LeBron openly campaigned to get Irving, and the Lakers didn't listen. The Nets were reportedly asking the Lakers for Russell Westbrook, two first round picks, and two more players. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Wednesday morning, L.A. Chargers new offensive coordinator Kellen Moore was introduced to the media via Zoom. Moore said the Friday and Saturday after the Cowboys season ending loss, the Niners was very busy for him with talks about his future in Dallas. Sunday was an action-packed day after the boys and Moore agreed to be in, be in their best interest to move on. Then things really sped up, he said, with the Chargers, and less than 24 hours later, LAC scooped him up. Not long after that, Cowboys executive vice president Stephen Jones told the media at the Senior Bowl that Mike McCarthy and Moore had some philosophical differences which played a role in Moore's departure. But Kellen said he enjoyed his time with McCarthy and the Cowboys. It was really fun uh, to go through that process with Mike. I had a ton of fun the last few years, uh, you know, being able to build this thing together and uh, build, build an offense, build a system that kind of merged two worlds together. And, uh, you know, I think we had a ton of success. You know, ultimately, we didn't get the uh, ultimate prize like we always, like everyone wants. But, uh, you know, I think we were able to achieve some things and uh, do some special things there. Kellen talked with the media before taking his family to Disneyland later that day. So that's why it looked like he was in a hotel room. Yeah, he's gone L.A. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, Larry. <laughs> I'll be right back. So a damp day tomorrow, just east of town, we could easily see around an inch of rain from tomorrow morning all the way into Wednesday morning. Often on light rain most of the day, some heavier pockets and storms tomorrow evening and tomorrow night. Then we clear out and it's even cooler Wednesday, 64. Then we're up to 74 Thursday with sun, but by Friday and the weekend, we cool back off again. Even a little bit of a light freeze by Saturday morning. Thanks, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 5 with us. World News up next. We'll see you back here at 6.